In this video, it's Foxan again, and uh, importantly, the choke cable. So uh, I'm not driving around without a choke cable just for the fun of it. You see, this one's come from CHG Classics over in Wisbeach, um, over on the east side of England, um, near where I used to live, in fact. There was just a bit of a mix-up. I thought this was on the way. I was hoping to get it before the MOT. Um, I think there was a slight mix-up. So um, it just came a little bit later than expected. Um, but here we go. There is a choke cable. Um, so hopefully that will fit. Uh, it's nothing very long, but it hasn't got very far to go because the engine sits so far back, the carburetor isn't actually very far away from the dashboard. So hopefully that's long enough. Uh, we've got nuts and washers variously. I think if I remember rightly, uh, that screws as well. I'm slightly confused as to why there are two lock screws, but nonetheless, uh, we must take those off so we can thread it through the dashboard. And then it'll come through. So Foxan passed the MOT um, on Tuesday. Today is Friday. She's just been sitting at home since then because obviously um, not having a choke cable, bit of a pain in the backside if I'm honest. Uh, really quite irritating, uh, but uh, we're okay now. Oh, I see. No, no, that does go down. So I think I only actually need one nut. But maybe two is there just to really lock it to the dashboard. Uh, so um, we'll move that out of the way. We should pull Fox and bonnet off with her racing style pins, which was just a temporary fix until I sorted the bonnet hinges out three years ago. Uh, there we go. Ellie, if you can look after that, be a love. That's good. Thank you. Hopefully getting on with Ellie welding on Monday. That's the plan. And uh, I'll see if I can feed this through. I've got to try and find the hole on the bulkhead. Uh, so this isn't going to be very exciting to film, but let's see if we can get through to it. Just before I do start on that, uh, I will just say the Toyota currently sat outside. The plan today was actually to do a compression check uh, on that car to see if we can identify where the um, head gasket fault is. I do think it's a head gasket fault. It seemed to lose a lot of coolant the other day. So uh, that needs doing. Um, but I haven't managed to yet. Um, there is a chap former Toyota Tech who is waiting for me to do that and then hopefully we can progress the Camry. Very likely we're going to have to do a head gasket, but I don't think a bad thing. Uh, I'll talk more about that car and why I haven't just claimed my money back from the dealer and all that sort of stuff in a future video. Well, today we are focusing on Foxan. So, um, see if I can get this fitted. Right, threaded the cable through. There it is. Stop that touching the um, choke cable, um, uh, the battery rather. Uh, I now need to get in behind here. So I think the air cleaner is going to have to come off. Uh, bag of tools is actually in the back of Foxanne. I thought it might be wise to carry some tools. Not that she usually causes me much worry. Yeah, so some people were getting upset that I was complaining about Imperial spanners. But the only reason I'm complaining is because most of my cars are metric. Uh, the other car is an interesting mix of both. And it's just irritating having to remember where the metrics are. Yes, that hose is very badly split. Uh, I should have ordered a replacement for that as well. There's a few things I could have ordered from James at CHG while I was at it. But uh, hasn't quite happened. But maybe we can get some gaffer tape or something on there just to try and improve the heater output. Because mostly I think this fan motor is just blowing air into the engine bay. It seemed to get up to temperature nicely today. I know it looked like the... Um, okay, oh, balls. You're losing that. Where did that go? Maybe I didn't drop it. Yeah, the temperature gauge, people were saying, oh, maybe your thermostat's gone, but it feels like she's up to temperature today. And maybe the thermostat was just a bit sticky. You know, she hasn't seen a lot of use over the past year or so. But also, it's really quite cold, and it wasn't unusual in olden days. Okay, let's see our filter assembly off. To have to... Um, to have to what? What am I on about? Yeah, to have to. To have to do something. To have to block the grill off to keep the engine hot. Uh, thermostat technology has come on a fair bit. Right, get rid of this black wire. We don't need you anymore. There we go. My emergency wire is now redundant. Uh, so the choke cable will come in. Uh, just bypass that and then come in here. There we go, and then it'll hold there. So I just need something to hold 
uh, the cable to the um, throttle spindle spindle or carb choke spindle. Come on, brain. I suppose it. Yeah, it is the choke. So here's the choke control. There's the throttle. So the throttle operates like so. When you put your foot on the pedal, choke cable. Uh, I need to find a way of linking it to that. Adam did mutter something about um, getting um, a nipple or something to hold it onto that, but I think I've got one. I think I had two when I did the throttle cable on Took, so let's hope I haven't lost the other one. I shall go and have a search um, there or thereabouts, and then we've got a, a working choke, and that will mean I can use this vehicle much more often. It's not very appealing having to operate the choke under the bonnet on a day when it's raining. I think the one I had off Took. Took's not coming out for a while, not the time of year for Took, even though she's been driven in snow before. Uh, I think this is now working. There's an easy way to check. Um, I clamber aboard. Oh, I'll put the centre console back where it needs to be. There we go. Make sure she's in neutral. Aha, that's choke on. That's choke off. Marvellous. So now we have an actual choke cable. That's not how you meant to do it, really. Um, if I'll show you what we've got. It's a double screw um, set up. And it's a bit big and chunky, really. And uh, I think I could do it with screwing it a bit tighter. But uh, nonetheless, it's holding. It'll do until I can arrange something better. Find out what you're actually meant to use. But that's what usually holds Tuck's throttle cable on. This bolt's too long, I've, I've just lost the bolt, that's why it's wobbling a bit. Because it should have a much shorter screw in, but that's what I've got. Um, I'll have to see if I can get another one of those. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of cable pull through. So I don't know how long it'll last before the cable just goes ping out of it again. So like I say, I might have to find a better solution, but uh, we actually have something that works. So I'll put the um, air cleaner back on. And uh, we can be on our way. Well, I may do an oil change. I've got some 2050 oils finally arrived. I've been waiting for it. Um, which, which is my own fault. I could have got some 2050 for Tuck. But Tuck's meant to use 30 grade. I had the opportunity to get some 30 grade. So I bought some 30 grade. So that's no use at all for Foxanne who would like some 2050. So, um, but I have that now, like I say. And I've got the oil filter and everything. So we could give her an oil change. Because she hasn't had one of those for a bit. And the oil... If I remember rightly, quite black. Uh, obviously, it's way over the mark because the engine's just been run. But, uh, yeah, definitely due, I would say. That's probably because she's done an awful lot of running on choke over the past year. Hasn't really got up to temperature, so hopefully the oil will stay a bit cleaner now. So, um, yeah, we might as well do that. It's still raining outside, so I can't do Camry things. So um, we'll do this instead. Well, things are progressing nicely. We've got the... Um, uh, air cleaner's back on, uh, oil's been drained, really, really black and nasty. Now filling up with some fresh 2050. Uh, I seem to be fitting a bigger oil filter. So, oh, turn the fan off. Uh, it's gonna crank her over, I've disconnected the coil. Quite getting the oil pressure out. Maybe she actually does need to fire up, but it's got the oil circulating anyway. So we'll um, dip the oil again, probably top up some more, and then we'll give her a start. The reason you start it over on the starter motor is the starter motor turns a lot more slowly than the engine itself. Uh, so the starter motor is probably turning the engine at about 200 RPM. Whereas once you fire the engine into life, especially with a bit of choke, it's going to be doing about 1,500, maybe 2,000 revs. So the lack of oil circulating becomes a lot more serious. This 2050 oil takes absolutely forever to um, go down. This isn't a good time of year for using 2050 oil. Um, so so, so um, viscous 
at this temperature it just takes forever to actually go down that's with a dipstick deliberately left out so air can be pushed out as the oil goes in so I haven't done anything about that heater hose it's on the to-do list I have topped up the screen washer though, so you know that's something uh, spark plugs spark plugs are a pain because the distributors in the way so I'm minded to leave those alone for now. If she's running all right, we'll leave her on them. It's not like those spark plugs have done an awful lot of miles, to be honest. But uh, yeah, hopefully she'll be a bit more usable and a bit more ready to go. Coolant level seems okay. It's sat right at the top of the fins. Um, th there's no point filling it more than that because if you fill it above the level of the fins, you tend to find uh, all it does is it just blows water out of the overflow. So there is a bit of expansion space in the top of the radiator. That's why it's slanted up like this towards the rad cap. I mean, I've never understood fully what people love about Foxanne. She's a bit of an odd one. It's just one of those things. I just bought her because she was local and 250 quid and I wasn't going to say no to that, even with a completely dead engine. She's become something of a channel favourite. And I kind of understand why people love Tuck, why people love Ellie the 2CV, even little frog face Myrtle. But... Um, yeah, Foxanne is a bit of a different one. I mean, she is quite cute. And when you see her about the place, especially parked next to larger vehicles, you, it's easy for me, which I've parked amongst these dinky things, to lose sight of the fact she is tiny. It's a very little car. Uh, perhaps because of the height, you lose sight of that. But when you actually see it, the, the length of it, I, have to, I can't park it too far into a parking space or it looks like the parking space is empty. It's that sort of dimension. Uh, she is super cute and... But, you know, she, she's never done anything particularly impressive in my ownership, which is entirely my fault, um, other than just, you know, getting on. And uh, like, like I said in the previous video, she's done about a thousand miles between MOTs, if that. It's not a lot of miles. There's a lot I need to do to make this car better. Um, she, she lets a fair bit of water in on wet days. Uh, one of the issues is Reliance never had gutters. A lot of people fit their own gutters so the water is carried away from the door opening. That can improve things. Uh, need to make the heater better. It'd be really nice to have a two-speed heater fan, in all honesty, because this single-speed one is feeble. Uh, it does demiss the windscreen, but the two vents are quite a long way away from each other. Or maybe, no, those are the vents there, aren't they? Uh, they tend to leave a bit in the middle of the windscreen that never quite clears. So, um, yeah, could be better. But yeah, I have to think. What what do you want me to see to see me do with Foxanne? Do let me know in the comments, and we'll try and work out some adventures. Uh, she will be going to the um, Practical Classics Restoration Show at the NEC. Uh, this is the smaller of the two classic car shows they have there. But um, I love the guys on Practical Classics. I've been friends with some of them a very long time, so uh, it, it's a good show to be at. I might not be with Foxanne. Foxanne is going to be on the Reliant Owners Club stand. This is what was meant to happen two years ago. And they're going to set about hopefully doing some of the front suspension work, new dampers, new rubber bushes. Um, so hopefully she'll be in much better fettle for the drive home. Uh, I will be, it looks like, with Furious Driving and iDriver Classic again, uh, Steph and Matt, or Matt and Steph to be um, co correct there, uh, we're going to be in Hall 4, by the look of it, quite near the entrance to Hall 4. So I might be separated from my vehicle, but I'll naturally be popping over to say hello to the Reliant guys from time to time. Uh, it's a bit of a smaller show than the NEC one in November, and uh, probably in a good way, to be honest. Just going to need another slug. Uh, so um, you can easily get around it in a day, but if anything, it's much more hubnut. There's a lot more restoration projects which is why Foxanne is um, the, the choice I think given where she's come from and uh, uh, yeah it, it's there tend to be a lot more barn a lot more cars that aren't just shiny shiny uh, the main NEC show there can be an awful lot of cars and there's nothing wrong with this for you know don't see many miles and don't get much use uh, that they, they tend to be in much better condition which is fine that's the thing but the restoration show tends to be more realistic, if you know what I mean. It's cars that probably aren't in immaculate condition. Some clubs don't get it and will still turn up with a load of shiny cars anyway. But what we want to see is the restorations in progress. The body shells stripped down and the mechanical components in bits. That's what makes that show good. So hopefully there'll be some clubs doing that sort of thing and it'll be um, very enjoyable. Uh, that show takes place 
on the 18th to the 20th of March. And uh, there may well be sort of COVID protocols in place. I think they worked very well at the November show. Uh, I spent the whole weekend with an awful lot of people and didn't get COVID. So that seems quite good to me. Uh, but yeah, should be fun. So that's um, going to be in March. And hopefully she can make it to one of the socials. I don't know which one. Um, uh, hopefully she will get there. She's not really a distant vehicle, but then there are any of my cars, uh, to be honest. And I think I'm going to say that is enough for now. Pop that on the um, drain tray down there out of the way. Uh, quick check for cables and everything. Put the breather stroke oil cap back in place. Uh, reconnect the coil. We'll probably make her run better at a guess. And we'll make sure that little orange light on the dashboard goes out. Let's put that bit of paper out of the way. All right, Foxant, let's have some action. Oh, I might need to set the choke with my choke cable. Let's give her a splodge of that. Oh, she's got cold now. Foxan, come on. Splodge more choke then. Well, this is amusing. Yeah, she's not got enough choke going on, I don't think. Let's give her all the choke. Oh, that water pump is still having a bit of a groan. Oh, she sounds particularly sweet. It Idle's a bit off at the moment, but we've got the oil pressure. So. The old check for oil leaks below. Right, I'm going to let her um, get that oil up to temperature. And uh, then we'll probably go home. So uh, that was this video. Fox has had a semi-service. Uh, I still haven't sorted that out. Let's sort that out. Let's sort that out. Come back. Amusingly, I can't find my um, gaffer tape, so that hose will have to stay how it is. But oil level's fine. Check that, the oil's lovely and golden rather than black. So uh, we should be uh, looking good for a while to come yet. So we'll give Foxan some more use, but yeah, you will be able to see her at the Practical Classics Classic Car and Restoration Show. That's what it used to be called. I think it might just be the Practical Classics Restoration Show these days. Uh, the NEC in Birmingham and it should be fun two years after this was meant to happen so very very excited uh, so yeah thank you very much for watching and um, don't forget you can just about still get a Hubnut 22 2022 calendar which does Star Fox and somewhere she's in there somewhere I'm sure there she is there, there's a clue she's in March on the Hubnut calendar so those are available at hubnut.org uh, store is up and running low stocks on some stuff but uh, yeah, other stuff we've got plenty of, so do head over there. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Farewell. Isn't it a brilliant roof?